unser nächster Referent, Lucano Ruccia. Er ist ähm, Geschäftsführer der Arbeitsgemeinschaft für Tabakprävention in der Schweiz. Die Organisation hat zum Ziel, ähm, das Nichtrauchen in der Schweiz zu fördern. Auf der Website habe ich gesehen, dass unser Land immer noch eins der Schlusslichter ist in Bezug auf den Schutz vor dem Rauchen und dem Einfluss der Tabakindustrie. Darum jetzt sicher das Thema Jugendschutz aus Sicht der Tabakprävention Schweiz. Ich freue mich sehr, Lucano Ruccia begrüßen zu dürfen. Er wird sein Referat wahrscheinlich in Englisch halten. Ich lasse mich überraschen. Vielen Dank. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, I will uh, have my. Uh, I will speak in English because I'm from Ticino, so I'm already sparing uh, uh, you. Uh, can you see my presentation? Yes, but you so you should switch to the presentation mode, please. Okay. Just a second. It's better like this. Perfect. Okay. Let's go. Wonderful. So yes, I will uh, talk in English because I'm from Ticino, so I am already saving you from a presentation in Italian. Um, so I'm the director of Weisgemeinschaft uh, um, uh, Tabak Prevention Schweiz, uh, and we are mainly financed by our members and by the Tabak Prevention Fund. Uh, as disclaimer. So we heard quite a lot about the uh, potential uh, eventually of uh, uh, e-cigarettes um, e or ends uh, in order to stop uh, smoking or reduce consumption. But uh, uh, Reto hinted a little bit uh, that other problems are also connected with electronic cigarettes. And for us, one is really to protect the youth. Um, and to protect the youth, uh, uh, the problem is how to regulate uh, uh, electronic nicotine delivery systems in Switzerland. And what are the relevant questions? Um, first of all, I want to remind you that uh, ENDS are uh, available uh, in Switzerland for, uh, since a bit more than uh, 10 years, uh, but the prevalence has uh, rate already mentioned is uh, stable in the last 10 years at 27 percent and at the same time the absolute numbers of smokers increased because the population in Switzerland increased uh, uh, of about 1 million so uh, with such a prevalence we should uh, consider to have a at least 200,000 more uh, smokers. Um, ends are uh, freely available on the market uh, uh, there is no uh, limitation of, say, age uh, to, to buy such products. Uh, there is no federal limitation, just in some cantons, I, I will go over that. And as uh, uh, Reto mentioned, they are uh, cheap and they are not, uh, 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 they don't have any taxes. So the question if, uh, if, uh, uh, and a question for everybody of you is uh, if uh, ends uh, are so effective to help people to stop smoking, why we do not see any change in prevalence uh, in Switzerland in the, last, in the last 10 years. And this is certainly also, uh, this also linkage to prices as Reto mentioned, and actually uh, the real price of a package of cigarettes at Migros is 550. This is uh, uh, the uh, uh, lowest price that you that you can find. Uh, now we say, or many people say, that uh, nicotine is not uh, is not so dangerous for the health. Uh, yes, but uh, for uh, young people, uh, especially until the age of twenty five, it is known that uh, during the brain uh, the development of the brain, uh, nicotine can have uh, uh, very negative impacts. Uh, uh, especially on the activity of the brain cells, uh, 
uh, uh, linked to uh, attention, learning, memory. It, uh, it can also worsen anxiety, irritab irritab irritability, impulsivity. So it is not harmless, uh, especially for young people. Uh, now, what is the legal situation in Switzerland? As I mentioned, we do not have a law on tobacco products. Uh, this law is still in discussion uh, in the parliament. So there is no uh, federal limitation, uh, age limitation to buy any products, actually. We are the only country in Europe uh, with Kosovo that has no age uh, limit to buy cigarettes or any other pro product. We only have cantonal loads. And uh, uh, in two cantons, we have no limits for cigarettes. Uh, but for electronic cigarettes, only those five cantons uh, have some, some sort of regulation uh, for the uh, sale of electronic cigarettes. And uh, as long as we will not have the federal loan tobacco products, uh, uh, we uh, kids and young people will have easy access to those kind of products. What we know from, uh, from some research internationally is that if in young people the uh, consumption of tobacco products remains uh, uh, stable but a high, at a high level, at the same time the consumption of other uh, tobacco and nicotine product is increasing uh, quite dramatically depending on the country and conditions. In Switzerland, we have very limited research and knowledge on uh, the consumption of uh, certain products in uh, uh, young people. Uh, we, I just choose uh, a few of the things that we have uh, in 2015. Uh, we already knew that electronic cigarettes were very popular among adolescents. And this is, this is going on, this is increasing. But we also knew that uh, uh, knowledge and data are, were missing. Uh, now in uh, Lausanne, this study, uh, this study uh, of Addiction Suisse uh, showed that in 2018, uh, at least 50% uh, uh, of young men of 15 years old already tried uh, electronic cigarettes and 34.8% of young women. And uh, the, the consumption during the last month is 20% respectively, almost 13%, again, for young people of 15, uh, 15 years old. A uh, recent uh, study in Zurich is also uh, telling us that one out of five uh, young people of 13 years old uh, already tried electronic cigarettes. And I think this is a, absolutely a scary number. And uh, we, should, uh, we should consider that uh, uh, very seriously. Now, um, Ray Reto uh, uh, spoke a little bit about uh, uh, advertisement. And uh, we know that all the industry uh, is uh, aiming at young people uh, with various kinds of uh, strategy uh, using more and more um, digital media and social channels like uh, uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, TikTok, uh, in order to promote uh, their products. And uh, we can see that this kind of images are really aimed at young people. And uh, uh, we should not be blind at what the industry is trying to do. The industry is trying to create a new gener generation of uh, people addicted to nicotine to, in order to continue to sell their uh, products. Another uh, problem linked to that uh, uh, for electronic cigarettes is, uh, is the use uh, of uh, flavors. And uh, uh, Aurélie also mentioned a little bit uh, that, but uh, I'm trying to present that in another way. That what th this is what you find in web pages in Switzerland about uh, uh, flavors for electronic cigarettes. Now, please don't tell me that those kind of flavor flavors are designed or thought uh, in order to help 
adult uh, smokers to uh, uh, stop smoking and to sw uh, switch to electronic cigarettes. I think here's the focus is really uh, to attract a new kind of uh, public comment. So the real question is really how to uh, regulate uh, electronic cigarettes in a country like Switzerland. Again, I remind you, there is no regulation. There is nothing today. Um, and we should consider what are the, uh, what are the interests, the, the goals of uh, a public health policy. And those are not exactly the goals of an uh, individual health policy. I can very well understand that uh, uh, if uh, Rato is uh, receiving a patient in his study, uh, he can uh, suggest to use a certain kind of product or uh, an electronic cigarette. Uh, but this is totally different from uh, uh, what we should uh, uh, do and uh, uh, have as a discussion uh, at a public health level. Um, so at a, in, a, in a regulation discussion, the, uh, to assist smokers to quit and avoid dual use is only one element that should be considered. So it's a kind of uh, striking a balance between the public health interest and the individual health interest. And uh, as an association, ATE is, uh, uh, is uh, much more worried with the public health uh, aspect of this. So I'm trying, I'm trying uh, uh, very hard to come up with, uh, with a model of uh, of uh, equation of uh, what we could uh, uh, what we could say a uh, number reduction intervention or uh, impact of the use of uh, electronic cigarettes uh, in the society. So we already saw uh, some elements of the toxicity of uh, of the products uh, compared uh, comparing one product to others, um, but this is should should be. Uh, balance with, uh, with the health impacts of the consumption of uh, those products and with the risk of addiction that, that those products uh, also uh, can cause. And uh, uh, at the end, you have what we could say a realized public health benefit. Now, at the same time, uh, uh, yes, we would like also to reduce the number of uh, uh, consumers. It's only by reducing the number of consumers that we could have a long uh, a lasting effect uh, on the public health in our country and on, on the cost of the uh, public health system. So there we should consider the number, if we intervene, if we, uh, if we have, like we have already on the market electronic cigarettes, uh, we have a certain number of consumers, sex ante, so the number of uh, smokers, uh, or consumer or nicotine products, and we should consider what the new products can bring as uh, new smokers. Uh, uh, there is a big debate on the gateway uh, effect, uh, but there is the risk of dual use, uh, uh, eventually reduce quitting. I'm not so sure that uh, it's always effective. Uh, the, and the normalization of nicotine consumption in the society, which is also risk. Um, on the other side, we have the number of quitters. Uh, what those products can help us to, uh, to help, uh, how many people are uh, effectively uh, helped uh, to quit uh, smoke, uh, cigarettes, uh, and uh, finally, uh, eventually, all kinds of products. And you end up with the number of consumer exposed. This is a little bit uh, a, a model on which I'm trying to reflect now to balance the different aspects uh, of uh, electronic cigarettes and other uh, tobacco nicotine products and what the impact they can have on the general population of uh, cons consumers and what we can do to improve that. And with that, I'm finished. Ja, vielen Dank für diese eben etwas andere Perspektive, die Public Health Perspektive, die du da hier schön aufgezeigt hast. Ähm, das wäre mal die Frage ähm, aus dem Publikum, 
Äh, wie ist die Entwicklung eben bei den Jugendlichen, was, das, was die Raucherprävalenz anbelangt, seit eben die Endprodukte verfügbar sind in der Schweiz? Da ist in Europa ähm, die Prävalenz bei Jungen äh, eher rückläufig? Wie sieht das in der Schweiz aus? Also die, Frage ist, ja. die Frage ist für mich. Ja, aus dem Publikum, die wissen, oder äh, vielleicht aus dem Komitee, ähm, gibt es Personen, die etwas über die äh, Veränderung der Prävalenz wissen bei Jugendlichen zum, zum Rauchen in der Schweiz, seit also, Einführung der ähm, Endprodukte? Bis jetzt, wir können nicht wirklich sagen, dass es gibt eine, äh, eine große Änderung bei Prävalenz von Rauchern in Jugend. Wir wissen, dass in der Jugend die Prävalenz ist viel höher ist als in Erwachsene, so zwischen 15 und 25, oder 25 Jahre alt, das ist über 30 Prozent. Uh, und dann später uh, geht ein bisschen tiefer. Uh, so, wir haben nicht wirklich uh, solide Prävalenzendaten in, in diese Gruppe. Uh, wir können nicht uh, sagen, dass es geht uh, runter, leider. Okay, vielen Dank. Und wir haben keine, keine Studie über die Gateway Effects in, in der Schweiz. Das wäre sicher etwas, das wir sollten uh, uh, promovieren. Das war eben auch eine Frage aus dem Publikum, die, die Studien zur Gateway-Theorie. 